I'm Noel Hedges, I'm EVP of content at DRG and my role is to manage and acquire all of the content um, in the DRG catalogue across all genres but obviously we have a, I have a big focus on scripted. Uh, you've got quite a few shows, Scandinavian Noir, um, Trace Ullman's new scripted comedy. Uh, explain to us some of the, the big hitters on the, uh, on the DRG catalogue at the moment. At the moment, so I say we have a new series of Doc Martin, and we only get a new series of Doc Martin every two years, um, but it's a great one for us because it, it is, from a value point of view and a sales point of view, it's incredibly successful. People have really embraced that show and it has a really long tail in terms of its uh, distribution life. It re re repeats sales. And so having a new series to kind of refresh the catalogue of that show and that franchise is fantastic. It also keeps alive our remake business on that show as well. We have about seven different remakes of Doc Martin around the world that kind of sit kind of quite sort of synergistically with the original. Um, so that's been really good to have, um, to grow and keep that sort of franchise alive. Tracy Ullman's a different one in that comedy, we haven't had a sketch comedy show for a very long time and Tracy hasn't been on British television for about 30 years or something. Um, so to have her back for the BBC, um, in a, real, in a prime time show um, was fantastic from a marketing point of view. We was, I was slightly questioning like, what's the appetite for sketch comedy these days? I don't really, I haven't had experience of it for a long time. Um, but the reaction we had at MIPCOM was fantastic. You know, with really people, Tracy came down and she launched the show and she met buyers. And it's broad comedy, which I think is where comedy lands best internationally. It's not sort of, it's not on the edgier side or the subtler side of a lot of British comedy. It's broad, it's physical, it's, you know, um, a lot of slapstick, let's say, um, which I think sits well. well um, so we've had surprising success in some surprising territories for that, and hopefully that'll come back for more. And yeah, on, on so the comedy side, we've got a Peep Show, a new series of Peep Show. It's the final series of Peep Show. Um, cult show for a lot of people, a bit trickier to sell, so it's mainly into those English language broadcasters, some... Scandinavian territories, um, but certainly it does very well in the markets it sells in. Um, but obviously, it's very British in sensibility. But we're really pleased to have that. Um, and then on the Scandi side, I mean, we're continuing our relationships both in house with MTG's production, the Nice Group production company. So we have a new series of Black Widows from Finland, um, series two that's just about to launch. Um, Black Widows has been phenomenally successful both as a finished version and a format. Um, and we've really seen people embrace the kind of the really originality of the concept of that program, um, and it's really it's really sort of a boost to see them buy the original, which I've never really had an experience of selling Finnish shows. Um, so to see them, people embrace that and um, see it as a really fun concept, it's been great. So the second season of that is good, and we've got a Scandinavian version of that coming up as well. Drama, obviously, is the uh, the genre that everybody wants to be involved with at the moment. Um, there's a lot of talk about how there's too much drama. From a distributor's point of view, how do you make uh, a show stand out? And, and how do you sort of get involved at the very early stages? We understand distributors are getting involved earlier and earlier. Yeah. How important is that in the whole process? Is it Im I don't know whether it's important in the overall process. It's important from the financing of a project. I think there are moments the distributor can get involved early to maybe help mould something slightly more internationally, maybe from a format perspective, you know, structure, how many episodes, durations, and all that sort of thing. But fundamentally, if a programme's being commissioned, you know, we will distribute it once it's commissioned and produced. Um, but we are getting involved early, and it, whether something's done, commissioned and in production, or something's in development, it's very. It's getting harder to know which are the sort of which are the ones that are going to really pop. Certainly, on the Scandinavian side, we've noticed there's a glut of Scandinavian content out there at the moment. So we're really looking at things that have real unique qualities to them, either in the talent of production and producers, directors, or the concept just is so unique, um, or the setting brings something special. Um, and being pitched a lot of. Scandi content that feels quite domestic um, and just because it's Scandinavian doesn't mean it's going to fly internationally. I think buyers are wanting to buy Scandinavian drama because it gives them that flavour of good Nordic drama that they've seen successful. 
Um, so they don't just want the next CSI from Scandinavia. I think they want something that kind of feels Scandinavian and feels strange and different. And and with in uh, sort of putting investment into a production fairly early on, getting involved in that process earlier, as you say, there is a lot of competition. So for a dis- from a distributor's point of view, that risk element seems to be increasing all the time, and, and a lot of the risk is always put on, on the distributor, yeah. it seems. How do you sort of balance that risk with, with the reward? Um, you just know when to stop, I think, fundamentally. I mean, I think if you want... Well, DRD's not a company, I don't think, that... Um, we know when to say no, you know, and when we're going to, we know our limits and when we're going to start. If we really want something, we've got the capacity to go after it. Just generally, yeah, there is an in, in, insane competition at the moment. Um, and we are bidding amongst other people for a lot of content. Um, how do we make it? Yeah, I don't know how, you know, you just take that, you just have to take a risk. There's no two ways about it. And you don't really know if it's going to work. Um, you can't, if it's an independent production, you can't go out and shop it before you've got the rights, you know, um, as much as one would like to find out what people think of something. You can't do that. Um, so I think one of the ways for us to kind of combat that kind of fervent competition and, and inflated prices, because there are inflated, inflated prices in distribution, too much pressure is being put on the distributor that isn't actually, doesn't actually equate to the, the actual end result, um, is to work earlier with producers to try and be there at development stage to help them co-finance the program. So we're working with a lot of our producers to help them find a, a US partner or a German partner or a French partner up front to take on some of the deficit to maybe pre-buy or co-produce. Then we will come in for you know for a, a good number but we're not um but it, everyone's kind of sort of taking the pain together rather than it just being on international do you expect to see a, a change in the landscape from, distribu- from the distribution point of view? Do you think there will be some distributors that, that do get hit and do get scorched by, by being involved perhaps with the wrong project? I mean, yeah. It's all risk, it's all investment, isn't it, in the end? Um, I, think that's, I think increasingly you're not going to see as many drama pro- independent distributors. DRG is not really independent in that respect. You know, we're part of a big group. Um, I don't... Unless it's a risk, it only takes for, for it to go wrong once to put people off uh, investing in drama. But when it goes right, everybody wants to do it. Um, I think I think you'll see drama distributors being well, generally well backed, part of groups, stable businesses these days. Yeah, I think that's what producers want. They want their distributor to be. Uh, pretty constant and stable and and do a function that is reliable and offers a good service so yeah I think you will uh, I don't think you'll see that I don't think there are really many small little kind of shops now on drama the uh, the sort of the, the, the increase in, in drama um, around the world what are you noticing from a, from a broadcaster's point of view what is everyone looking to to pick up what are the sort of trends you talk about Doc Martin mm. being very successful what other sorts of uh, shows are you seeing serialised drama is massively successful still um, mainly sort of influenced by the Scandinavian success people have found that level of storytelling really attractive it's good for broadcast if it's a real hit, things like Dr. Foster in the UK. You know, there's water cooler, appointment view type of series, but equally they work very well on the online space as well. So I think uh, um, that's fantastic. I think we're seeing perhaps a move towards more of a procedural um, focus in some territories. Procedural is difficult. It can be quite domestic, in um, certainly in non-English language. It would be quite tricky to sell. Um, but certainly from the US, I think we're seeing... Uh, I think a lot of international buyers have called the US studios for more procedurals because they're not getting enough for the free TVs. Um, from my point of view, though, it's really serials, and you're seeing much more higher concepts. I'm seeing much more uh, broader subjects that, than just your generic kind of crime show uh, or um, investigative drama.